My name is Alistair. I am an Austin 7 enthusiast and I am building another Austin 7. I have one already and I want another one. Uh, I'm building this over the next couple of years and uh, I've decided to document uh, the activities in building this, uh, some YouTube videos uh, and, and a blog post. Today is about the back brakes. Uh, you've got two choices basically. You can take a original uh, Morris Minor back plate, uh, which is where hydraulic brake conversions for an Austin 7 come from. And you can modify the steel back plate by welding a step in it on the, in the middle. Or you can buy some aluminium back plates. Now the problem is at the moment the uh, aluminium back plates are not available machined. However, I managed to track some of these down uh, a dealer in Ireland and uh, I thought I would uh, show you uh, what is involved in machining one of these. Uh, perhaps it might inspire uh, somebody to machine some for the wider community. The first thing um, is to uh, get yourself a template. Now, the information on these templates uh, was not all that obvious uh, readily available but I have the original uh, Morris Minor backplate for the rear and so uh, I basically just plotted uh, the casting as it supplied plus uh, the slot where the slave cylinder goes. Uh, that's a relatively simple idea and I made this area here in the center uh, I made that 3% larger because it varies 3% from the top of the casting to 20 millimeters down which is the where the slave cylinder resides so uh, this uh, took a fair amount of time to produce a template when cutting out the template just cut out the middle bit where the casting is and not this bit here, uh, this bit you can use just to center punch the corners uh, on the cast. I casting. suggest that uh, when you're uh, center punching this you uh, attach the template to the casting with a bit of duct tape and then there's a, a little circle in the middle of the hole that you should uh, center punch. The next area of concern is where the wheel cylinder sits. It's not flat because it's a casting uh, it's got a sort of curve off of this vertical part here and if you don't flatten it the, you've got no chance of getting the, uh, the wheel cylinder uh, sitting properly. So I'm going to take a few thou off of here and I may take some more off later on. I think you can see uh, I've flattened that area off now. It's nice and flat so I can have a consistent uh, surface to deal with uh, while fitting the uh, the, the, slaves, the, the wheel cylinder and that's the next job. This is uh, cutting the slot for the, slate, the wheel cylinder. It would appear that uh, no matter how accurately you cut the hole uh, the slave cylinder will not fit in the back plate and the reason for that is because the gap allowed is four millimeters and the back plate thickness the, the alloy casting thickness is about six millimeters so uh, something has to be done at either end to allow the cylinder to engage with a very similar setup in the milling machine I've managed to uh, relieve this casting so that both sides are consistently 4mm. Unfortunately, the slave cylinder is slightly wider than 4mm at this end and narrower than 4mm at this end, so I'm going to have to give it a little fettle. don't know if you can see this or not clearly but there's actually a step in the casting it goes at one dimension there and then it steps up by about 0.2 of a millimeter although the slot and the uh, slave cylinder are now dimensionally correct uh, 
it goes in, but there is no slide. Uh, the, the whole device should be able to slide back and forward and I can't actually move that um, just now. So I'll have to put it back in the mill. On closer examination, it would appear that the, uh, the tightness is caused by not enough room down here. So I'm going to have to put this back in the milling machine and take about 0.5 of a millimetre off of there because there just isn't really enough room with the template and you can't go uh, put the cylinder any further over that way because you'll be starting to encroach on the on the drum so I am confident the template is in the right place it's just the casting tolerance is uh, causing it. I hope you can see that uh, this is a uh, Hopefully one final operation to square up the casting to allow the slave cylinder to sit where it should. I hope you all uh, see that now that the uh, casting has been relieved in this area and uh, it allow and the all the tolerances are correct in the um, slave cylinder and the back plate with a bit of relief at the back to allow it to slide. Um, I'm now quite happy with it. Uh, there's not too much, uh, too much play there. Just a little bit, uh, 0.1 of a millimetre slop, uh, and uh, quite pleased. This is the setup for cutting the slots in the end for this clip. Uh, it's fairly tricky. Uh, the, the, key, the key issue is to get a long enough cutter because otherwise your milling machine will foul on the plate. So that's, uh, that's a bit of a... The final job uh, on these back plates is to relieve the corners of the casting because if you don't relieve the corners inside here it, w it won't fit over the, uh, the flange on the, on the rear axle or the, or the front axle for that matter. Um, I've got a 50mm cutter here with four blades, four chips in it. That's the biggest cutter I've got. Um, ideally you'd want something a bit bigger to take up this radius here, but um, this isn't bad. Uh, it seems to do the job. Uh, I'll just start it up and show you. After you've found the top of that job you can then swing it back and forward and gradually work your way back out without damaging the casting. Here's a test piece I made up uh, for checking the fit on these things. Uh, this is it after it's come out of the machine. Uh, you should be able to stick that in there. It's exactly the same size as the... Uh, and there should be no gaps between the test piece and the casting. Whereas if you don't leave the uh, casting of its uh, draft, then uh, you'll find that that doesn't fit properly. Here's um, it on the actual diff, and uh, it should be a nice snug fit uh, without any rocking. One of the last things you need to do is make one of these clips. Um, they're pretty well folded around the... Uh, Voids you cut with the, or the grooves you cut with the milling machine in the in the end plate there. Um, it's got to take up the ends of the shoe that sits in there. And it should look like that, and basically that that will wear better than the al bare aluminium. I thought I would uh, finish the film by showing the completed assembly with the new brake drum. And there's the uh, cylinder in place, and the clip in place, and uh, the drum fits. Here is the template I made up for the front brakes. I've not machined them yet, but uh, it's basically uh, front brakes are an awful lot simpler. Uh, you have, however, got these holes, these uh, fixing holes for the cylinders. 
these are pretty critical. Uh, the holes relative to the cutout are very, very critical. You don't get that right, you'll end up filing it. But uh, I haven't made these yet. <laughs> 